Oh, sorry, I can say that agenda. Okay. Yes. Um, motion carries. Now item E, consent calendar. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. second. Okay, any discussion from the board? No. Any discussion from the public? Yes. I am handicapped this evening, and I, that's what I was trying to say. My hearing is off, okay? So if I ask, just like when Linda comes in here and asks for you to speak up, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, I would respect if you would take account to my disability, temporary disability, on my uh, hearing this evening. Thank you. Hang on for a second. Now we're talking about the minutes. Was that part of the consent calendar? Yes, so that motion just carried. We've moved on to Okay, that. so that's what I was talking about earlier. Please be specific. I'm not trying to be rude here, but I am trying to participate as I have legal right to do in our, in, with our local government. And uh, you have, you have created a. Are you taking your time right now? You're no, I am. I am talking about the the minutes. Right, so we've moved on. We're no, on I, I'm sorry. You haven't moved on. You didn't announce them. We did. You you talked about the consent calendar. You did not talk about the minutes. Okay. I would like to talk about the minutes. See, that is, that's part of the consent calendar. The consent calendar is A, draft minutes, and B, bills paid. We already. Would you please the take note? that the minutes are incorrect and to correct them. Thank you. Thank if, if you're not going to do that, what you're doing is denying my civil, civil rights, okay? And I am very serious. The amount of illegal behavior that is done here is really repugnant. And there's going to be a, a reckoning. And here, here are, is what I said. Please correct the minutes, and please vote on it to correct them. Are there any other comments from the public for items not on the agenda? Linda. Um, yeah, I, I finally saw another bill from architect Hansel on the park maintenance shed. And after going through the bill and seeing lots and lots and lots of work that he's been doing um, for the last uh, at least three months, maybe more, but the last month hasn't been billed to us yet. I was wondering if we could perhaps have a monthly status on what's been going on with the maintenance shed. I think it would be nice to know how things are going, and when we see another 12000 almost $12,000 being built, uh, billed to us for the last few months, It'd be nice to know some of what's going on because I don't understand the abbreviations, you know, when they say, uh, well, whatever they say in here. Um, I don't understand the abbreviations. And there's lots of, lots of different things that seem to be happening for another 12 grand. So I would, um, I would really like to see that. I think it would be very helpful to the community to know that things are rolling along, even though we do have to wait for the county. And another part, I was wondering about is he's got a, a bunch of free stuff in here for us, pro bono stuff. And I'm wondering what resident questions means because in the billing, and again, this would be something nice that we could be understanding the residents' questions, the residents could understand whether he's talking about face-to-face -face questions, you know, if he meets you on the street, or if he's responding to the next door website questions and answers because he has been doing a lot of that and it seems like some of the times when he's saying he's given us free pro bono resident questions it's during the time where he is actually responding to next door and I don't believe that responding to next door is part of the agreement and obviously we're not paying for it because he's saying pro bono, but I don't even think he should be saying it's pro bono because it's not, it's 
next door. It's personal stuff. It's just something that he wants to get into. But in any case, I think it would be really nice to know what is going on, because obviously there's been a lot of work between Hansel, uh, architect Hansel, and the manager. So thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, I just wanted to say first how much I appreciated the, the firefighters going around um, playing music and the Santa seeing that. That was my, as relatively new, I thought that was pretty incredible. And while my son was terrified to get into the back of a truck with Santa, I think we, we probably appreciated more than he did. Um, so um, um, I just want to say thank you guys for that. I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, the second thing I just wanted to call out as it relates to Bill Hansel's um, renderings and his conclusions that, um, and just to remind me, I, my backyard is where the, where the, the facility, proposed facility is going. Um, the conclusions of his drawings were that there would be minimal, if any, perceptible site of the new, the new facility, which would be four feet higher. Um, now that it's winter now, and there's a number of deciduous trees, I wanted to first point out that he was using the top of the fence, which there's a significant portion that's a lattice. So he was implying that that was a solid that couldn't be seen through. So that's issue number one, that it's not um, properly reflecting the actual viewscape and that that drawing should be adjusted, especially since he does drawings based on the top of the fence. The second thing is, is with the viewscape in the winter season, when the deciduous leaf, uh, trees have lost their leaves, um, I can see it's what's barely perceptible now is the top of the facility. So now adding four feet, it will absolutely change the dynamic or at least the feel of where I moved um, here in Marinwood. So um, I just wanted my, my request from, given that he's using that as support for or justification for the current design, I would like that re-rendered um, to have a more accurate representation. I'm happy to take pictures and share that with the board as necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment time for items not on the agenda? Yes. Um, I, I uh, had actually uh, forwarded a couple of things to everybody, and uh, apparently none of you know have a return key because I actually never hear from any anyone uh, on the board, and I try to be respectful. I try to be helpful. But I don't understand um, your idea of demo representative democracy. Who, are you, who do you represent? I'm not asking you to represent, well, I am asking you to represent me, but I'm act actually asking you to represent the community. And to do that, you need to communicate and have dialogue and not hide behind a plaque. And it seems to me that you know, when Bill Hansel makes his statement, he's telling you basically you don't have to listen to those people. And I'm just wondering who you actually listen to if you don't listen to those people. You need to, you need, we need better outreach. And I urge you to uh, ponder this over the holidays. Uh, moving on to item G, district matters. Item number one, MOU between the Marinewood Firefighters Local 1775, <coughs> excuse me, and the Marinewood Community Services District. We have a, an agreement to approve. Hallelujah. <coughs> Do I have a motion? So moved. Did you tell it? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion among the board? Uh, finally. Yes. After. I want to say four years. Finally, we're going to do it. I think we should just do it and move on. Okay. Any comments from the public? Stephen. Uh, so, obviously, this is going to affect uh, our long term liabilities. And has there been an independent analysis of this? Has there been outreach to the community? What uh, the increased liabilities uh, entail. I think, um, I, you know, I, I support the firefighters. I support Chief Gray. I actually support the concept of a unified uh, fighting, uh, firefighting uh, team. Um, and 
I believe that uh, you know having it under one wheelhouse is is our long-term objective. I think that would be better for the firefighters. I understand the guys get paid more. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, certainly it's a bigger force and they, they have an opportunity to move up. So in, in our community, we really don't have the ability to manage these union contracts and the demands upon us. I think we need something, uh, a, a situation like the sheriff's department where we're uh, contributing a fee, but um, in terms of the, the managerial part of it, I think it's really too much for our, you know, volunteer, uh, volunteer uh, uh, politicians and, and uh, our staff. So I would encourage you to A, do a analysis of what you're about to sign and don't do it if you don't know what it is. And two, uh, really seriously, seriously explore the option of a merger. Um, and I know this has been discussed before, and it's got to be fair to the, the, the citizens as well as the firefighters. Right now we're subsidizing our, fire, uh, our, our neighbors, and uh, that doesn't seem to be right. So that's it. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, make the point that uh, LAFCO, after three years of doing nothing, is finally going to come up with recommendations for the uh, special districts in North San Rafael, which includes Marinwood, and they will do an in-depth study and come up with recommendations. Uh, at the rather leisurely pace they work, I don't expect anything uh, pretty soon, but there is an independent study by LAFCO that's going to be done on these issues. <clears throat> Thank you. Linda? Are we still talking about the MOU? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I'm extremely pleased that after all these years, things are being put into place. When I read it, I wasn't thinking about the extra liability. I was thinking about the pittance amount of raises that they're getting compared with, if you look at California, um, you know, there's websites that show the, the amounts of money that <coughs> San Rafael firefighters get and that Marin would get. So, I mean, definitely Marin would is the lowest paid of anybody in Marin. However, I'm just extremely happy that they are going to get some raises and I'm really happy about the paramedic piece of it. I don't know, I, I couldn't understand some of the legalese in there and whether or not the paramedic uh, situation is happening immediately, but I think it's fabulous that after years and years of promising paramedics in Marinwood, even though we have paramedics on our team here, they can't do their thing because we don't have a contract for paramedics. So I'm hoping that this is solidifying the paramedic piece of it and that we are going to have paramedics. So I'm just extremely pleased, and I hope you will all approve it, because um, to me, it's certainly better than anything we've had in the last three and a half years waiting for an MOU. So I hope you approve it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item two, employer-employee organizations relations resolution. Do I have any motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> any discussion? What? What is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is. Where am I? Two, 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 and oh, G two. Sorry, Eric. Do you want to speak to this? I, yeah, I, I can speak favorite. to it. Uh, <laughs> Ultimately, this is a legal document. It also talks about uh, rights of employees to form uh, organized labor. It also refers back to many of the laws, most primarily the Myers Millius Brown Act. It talks about policies, procedures in terms of communications with organized labor, representation, rights of organized labor, proceedings. Uh, a lot of this pushes back to our rules and regulations. 
Um, and this is really just more of a formal document that this district has never had in the past. Uh, that is a good thing for us to have. Um, I think you'll find it at just about any agency that has organized uh, organized representative labor. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, questions, comments from the public on this? Well, I just have a question. So, it's, I mean, there is a right to form unions. It's, it's, what is this? I mean, I think that's national, federal law. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I, I know that it exists. What does this do in addition to this? This, have you have you read it? Well, I, no. yeah, it's very, it's in legalese, so maybe you can tell me. Well, it isn't, it really isn't. But again, it goes through representation proceedings. It also goes uh, into things like impasse proceedings and how those will be handled, uh, policies and determinations for appropriate units. Uh, uh, how you form because they are formed within specific groups, uh, the administration of these proceedings, so on and so forth. So this is above and beyond uh, 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 what already exists in the law? Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily above and beyond say it, but it also clarifies which laws pertain to. Okay. Bob, you're welcome to jump in if you want on any of this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions, comments on this one? Pulling it back up here. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Moving on to item G3 policies and procedures govern governing employment and employee benefits. Do I have a motion? A motion. Do you want a motion to have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? I think Linda had just, oh, with us. Yes. Um, or Eric, do you want to say anything about this one? Yeah, I can lead in. I mean, this is obviously a large document. It's well overdue for this district. Uh, it's been many years since we've had a revised. Uh, this is a, a simple term, just an employee handbook. Um, it has gone through copious amounts of legal review, of board review. It has also been presented to uh, the labor group uh, quite some time ago for any identifiable negotiable impacts that were in there. That process is concluded. Um, I would strongly recommend uh, that this is approved tonight. Um, I would also say, as I put in my memo, these are the types of things that at a minimum, biannually, really annually, labor laws, HR laws, personnel laws change probably since I started my speech here. Um, so it, it just, it, this is a piece that protects the district, it protects employees, it makes it very clear what our policies are and various things such as benefits, uh, sick leave approval, I mean just the gamut. This is, I strongly recommend this is approved and implemented effective immediately. Okay. Any questions, comments from the public? Um, this is the employee handbook that we've been waiting for, right, for mm -hmm. seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. It was 11 pages, just to let you know. It used to be 11 pages. Mm -hmm. So what I'm wondering is, have you all read it page by page by page? And, and that also includes the other two new documents that you're going to be approving tonight. Have you all read everything, every single page? I mean, there's dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of pages. And I'm hoping that you have read it all, because it sounds like you haven't with some of the questions that are being asked. So I, I just want to make sure that you are reading it before you approve it, as opposed to, well, okay, don't forget, uh, what's your name? The Health Care Act, you had to approve it before, you had to pass it before you could read it. So you don't want to do a Nancy Pelosi on us. Thank you. Any other questions, Stephen? Yeah. Um, I believe this needs to be distributed. And, and, and by just saying you've got an attachment, at the very least, Eric, it, this is pretty easy to do if you've... Post it on the website very you, clearly. On the you, hang on for a second. But right in the memo, Word allows you to do a link, okay? So, and, and when you print out a PDF, that link will stay there. So I believe that that should be there and it should be written into this memo. I have never seen this, and uh, I guess you have more time than me. I don't read through, you know, employee handbooks all that much, but 
I'm, I believe if you guys need to be honest about it, but if you, as Linda says, if you don't know what's in there, there may have been changes and if there, and certainly the public has not really had a fair cut at this, um, I don't think you, you ought to approve it. I think you should just take the time, make sure, do a rigorous review prior to any approval. Can I mention something? Sure. I, I would love to mention that this handbook was approved more than two years ago. We went through countless revisions of this three years right. to two years ago. Yep. And we've been sitting on it for waiting for two years. Okay. Okay. So well, no, I, I, I hear what you're passing. saying, but, uh, but, but this now is... Now we're going to approve it. Well, approve it then, but you don't have the information. You don't have the employee so handbook gonna, in the packet. That. I believe it's required by the Brown Act. And you're, you're now, again, not following what the law requires of you. Now, I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the, the employee handbook, and I appreciate that we've been working on this for a long time. Time, what I'm asking you to do is simply follow the procedure as required by law. Thank you for your comment. Well, I just want to say that I know I'm the first, I'm on the board, this is my first meeting. I actually spent the day reading all these documents. Eric got multiple phone calls and I came in to talk to him about various questions. So when you're thinking that people aren't reading, they're going through this actually not the case. Um, I juggled many things today and that included reading the whole handbook, all the memorandums, asking lots of questions, getting clarifications. So, good. yes. This is a good opportunity for you to know that the Brown Act actually is for the public's benefit. But I'm just letting so, you know. So this is not a it back and forth time. So you don't get to keep going back and forth to more people, right? They're doing the courtesy of responding to you. That does not give you an opportunity to respond back. So I'm going to call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimously. Aye. Item G4, district manager's report. Um, Back sir, to you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, Ron kind of left to mention to it a little bit. Uh, I have a little bit of an update regarding LAFCO. I have met with them a couple times, one on one on one with their executive officer. Uh, at another time, I was joined in a meeting that contained representatives from all of the agencies, and it was specifically about what's known as the municipal service review uh, that they are going to be starting on. They have outsourced this to a group called Plan West. Uh, who has experience doing these types of reports. I think outsourcing it is a good move for LAPCO, so it actually makes it happen. Um, I, I put a timeline in the packet in there. Um, through April, they will be working on agency interviews and feedback. May through June, they'll have a draft report completed and available for public review, and ideally at some point, June through August, a final report will be completed and adopted. I don't know that these reports go so far as to make recommendations, but they certainly make analyses uh, as they go through. So uh, the other thing to say about this is uh, Jason Freed, who is the executive officer, has uh, offered to come into any of these groups' uh, board meetings and do brief presentations on what to expect from the report as well as from the process. Um, should that be desired, I can certainly help to arrange that. I don't think, I would probably wait a little bit, but at some point in the new year, uh, uh, he would be happy to come out and do that. Much of the way they, uh, yeah, I don't know who recalls, but Keen Simons came in when he first started with LAFCO. Um, I personally would wait a little bit until they get a little farther so we can actually tell you where they are in the actual process and uh, be able to update his timeline a little bit better. And then finally, uh, with the end of the board term for Director Schwartz, he is, uh, uh, he was the board liaison. Uh, the board liaison is, uh, uh, ultimately I always serve as, the, the district manager serves as the primary point of contact between LAFCO and them. I forward or uh, include or in any uh, communications or items of note. Uh, next month is when we typically appoint these types of things, so just something to, to keep in mind uh, if the board wanted another LAFCO liaison. Um, now it might not be too bad of a time, and this is certainly somebody that uh, could sit in with me if desired on, I'm expecting them to contact me and sit down for some of these initial uh, agency interviews as well. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, I haven't mentioned in here about Santa Fe Fire Department and that transition. I'm sure that Chief Gray will have more to say on the operations. I mostly uh, uh, just wanted to reiterate that this has actually been going very well. Um, much better, I think. I say as could have been expected. I think it's actually been going much smoother than, than could have ever been expected. It's going very well. I appreciate Chief Gray and all his staff have been in here often, um, all the way down to people at uh, an administrative level have come by to introduce themselves. Um, not to mention all of his VCs and Chief Senate has been very uh, active as well. Um, I recently met with a person from their vegetation management team. Uh, we sat down, had some conversations. Uh, starting to assess needs for the district as well as potential funding opportunities. Uh, I look forward to continuing those conversations. Uh, and then finally, one of the other things that I've been working on uh, that came up at a board meeting a while back is kind of updating all of our capital expenditure needs and uh, forecast and reserve planning. Um, Luke Fretwell and I have sat down and really looked over all the PNR stuff. I also sat down with Captain Brackett and Captain Salvatella at the fire department, went through a bunch. Um, been a busy couple months. It's not quite ready uh, or prime time yet, but it will be within the next month or two, and it'll be a good document that will uh, capture a bit of everything. So those have been some of the other items besides uh, a whole lot of other stuff. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments from the board? No? Point of order. I, I, I think any? that's what you asked. No questions or comments from the public. Okay, um, uh, this this Mr. has nothing to do with this item. Uh, okay, so has has uh, no, we're out of Ms. Or or lawyers? How do you pronounce your last name? Has she been sworn in? Yes. When when did that happen? Everything has been taken care of prior to the meeting. It has to be at a public meeting. What no, what? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks. Can I comment on that really quick, just yes. to get it out of the way? Um, yes, both Sivan Oyserman and Bill Shea have signed their uh, their oaths of office and uh, certificates of appointment, they've been duly filed with the elections department. That's where they reside. But the, the swearing in, it, swearing in is usually a public, no. at a public meeting. No. So we're, we're going to stick to the... Well, I want to know if you're going to be allegiance <laughs> so to the, the right now we're Constitution. Right now, Are there any comments or questions from the public? Yes. Stephen. So, uh, LAFCO is a, a great opportunity. Uh, this, this, this could be a really great opportunity to position ourselves for the future. And when I say the future, I'm not talking about two or five years out. I'm talking 20 years out. We have to look at the growth of our community long term, and we should be positioning ourselves for that growth. Um, I'm glad. Glad, glad, glad we're, we have Chief Gray uh, with our f fire department. And uh, in, case anyone, in case you guys are wondering, I'm not actually advocating that you get pay cuts or anything like that. I'm actually, what I, I believe that both the, the labor and the, so the, the citizens, I'm talking, I, I am talking about LAFCO, uh, deserve an opportunity to uh, have a better future. So I hope the district manager will, um, you know, bring some of these ideas forward uh, to LAFCO. Uh, as far as uh, capital expenditures and needs, we know that we've got serious uh, needs with the pool, and I would love to see the uh, general manager put together a report or, you know, do some long-term planning on that. Moving on to item eight, fire department matters. We have item one, chief officer report and activity summary to review. Chief Trey, turn it over to you. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here. The more wintry weather that uh, uh, we're glad to see uh, from where we were last month. So uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we did have some news. Um, uh, William Kelly, uh, firefighter paramedic, uh, completed all of his probationary reviews. And so he now has permanent status. So uh, pleased to see that. An excellent uh, uh, firefighter. I wanted to also mention, um, in terms of the MOU, we're appreciative of that. I know that's been uh, an effort um, by both the district and the firefighters to work towards. So it's nice to see that in place. 
uh, we'll be moving forward as quickly as possible uh, to implement uh, advanced life support or paramedic service, and we hope to do that right after the first of the year. So we have uh, two uh, licensed and accredited uh, paramedics uh, on our team here in Marinwood, and we hope to put their services into full use uh, shortly after the first of the year. So that's, that's great, and we're really pleased to do that. Uh, calls remain steady. This is actually a, a busier time. So while there may not be as many outdoor fires, there's certainly indoor fires. And uh, so that always brings me to, you know, at least make some type of fire safety message. We'll be pushing out some information uh, into the community over the next several days um, because uh, cooking fires actually peak at uh, Christmas time. So just reminding residents about a few precautions. Unattended cooking remains the single greatest source of uh, fatalities in residential fires uh, in the United States, and we have our share of challenges uh, here. So we'll push out some additional uh, public uh, fire safety education information and as well about uh, tree safety. So there's, there's a time and a place for the trees, but sometimes they overstay their welcome, and they're, they're certainly hazardous if not handled appropriately. But um, anyway, I, again, uh, very pleased to be here. We think the transition is going very smoothly and plan to uh, hit the first of the year 2019 running. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Um, I love the idea of communicating with the public. And um, I know Carolyn has access to the website. So if you can just push it her way, she will be able to find the appropriate place for it. And, there's also ability for us to have a, a banner with more, you know, emergency alert sort of thing. Like draws your attention. Yes. Yeah. So yes. Uh, feel free to use utilize it. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, can I say on that note too, Chief Gray and uh, his team have sent me all sorts of updated contact info. Um, this is actually on me. I just haven't had an opportunity to get to it yet, but we'll be updating the website with all the appropriate contact info, not only for Chief Gray, but every little thing from building plans, solar inspections, to uh, anything in between, who the proper people to contact are, where you can find them. Um, and then before you move on from fire matters, I do have one other thing, but I'm just following up on what you were saying. Other questions, comments from the board? Okay. Um, yes, I have a question for Chief Gray. Is it still the plan for the TAM fire crew to move into 53? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, that's still the plan. The that that offer is subject to the approval by uh, Marin County. Uh, oh, so, so it hasn't been finalized. It has not been finalized, and so after the completion of uh, new station 57 at 3530 uh, Civic Center Drive, um, the, currently the engine company is occupying a fire station at Joseph Court. So when they move into the new station. Um, part of our agreement with the county is to offer for sale at agreed upon price uh, station uh, 53 and uh, the, with the intention to move the uh, uh, Tamalpais uh, fire crew, a hand crew in there. And um, so that's really up to the county if they decide to do that or not. So we, we just don't know yet. Have you scheduled the grand opening party for the new 57 yet? <laughs> We have not scheduled it, but we anticipate that it's going to be in uh, April or May of 2019. Great. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the public? Uh, only thing I'd want to say is it's been, you know, from the public standpoint, it's been seamless. We got our Santa Claus, and, and you know, it's probably the greatest compliment you could have is no one, you know, it's it's going smooth. So keep it up. I hope everybody's happy. Um, just a couple things to bring up really quickly. Uh, more, this is a facility side regarding the fire department. Uh, we had to have some work done, uh, and I authorized it to get done, and I believe it's been completed at this point. But the exhaust system in the engine bay um, had. Uh, it wasn't working properly. We needed to bring people out to get that working. It's kind of a matter of, uh, of uh, health. So uh, thank you to uh, all the firefighters, and I believe uh, Firefighter Smith, um, Otis Smith, did a lot of work on making that happen. Uh, so that has been completed. It wasn't a huge expense, a few thousand dollars, I think, at the end of the day, but they needed to come out. They needed to move some of the things. It wasn't detaching properly. It wasn't venting properly. Um, but everything, all of that's been fixed and completed. I, 
believe at this point. Um, and then secondarily, another item that is gonna be coming up, um, and we've actually budgeted this in the past, and for various reasons it hasn't happened and it wasn't budgeted this year. Uh, they have a small shed in the back that contains a lot of uh, materials. It's this obviously was another one of the uh, Maringwood's very old handmade sheds. Uh, doesn't even have really much of a foundation since so directly on the ground and now it's leaking pretty good and really serves no purpose. Um, they have done a little bit of research on it and I've worked with them on this. Um, getting something like this replaced, it probably wind up costing us less than 4000 We've budgeted 4000 in the past. I will uh, be bringing this to a future agenda, if not in, in January, to present it. It's not a budgeted item, but I do believe it's a needed item. It's not a very expensive item, but it's a piece of critical storage area that they use in the back uh, for a lot of various equipment. Right now, everything's either up or in boxes or uh, has to be kept completely watertight um, due to the nature of this thing's just falling apart. It needs to get ripped out and a new one put in, so we've just been looking at something like a simple cup shed, 10 by, uh, 10 by 16, I think it was. 10 by 12. 10 by 12. Um, that I'm going back in the day. So that's where we're at. All right. And then leading into item at each two data next part commission meeting to be determined. Are we still thinking next year, I'm guessing? Uh, it won't be in December, uh, to say yeah. the least. I mean, that's next week. Uh, yeah, trying to. You know, heard cats for lack of a better term. I keep waiting for Ron to respond to my email. Um, uh, let me know when he's available. So, I'm available so, New Year's Day. Yeah, that's 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 that. Uh, no, yeah, it's just a matter of trying to find a, a date that we have a space available to meet as well as everybody else is available. Worst case scenario, it'll be the first Tuesday in February, uh, uh, but we're trying. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, moving on to item I, Park and Recreation Matters. Uh, item one, Trafman and the PNR Commission meeting is on November 27th. Very good questions, comments from the board? Any questions, comments from the public? This is regarding the draft minutes? The, yes, the PNR minutes, item I-1. Yes. So one of the items um, that was raised at the last p and uh, meeting was, uh, I guess none of the, the, none of the park and rec uh, commissioners want any kind of contact with the public uh, outside of something. I, I, I actually don't know. But they, they, uh, they specifically were upset that someone had dropped a note uh, at their at one of their residences and it was a violation of their privacy. And um, they all seemed to freak out that their email was going to be published. And um, I think each one of them and Fire Commission and this commission here really needs to understand what being uh, serving the public means. You can't just hide behind commissions, you can't appoint yourself additional years without communicating the, to the, the people, uh, swearing in in private meetings. I, I believe that's illegal. Um, but um, more than that, I mean, it, it really just, it's really, the, the board is, has become more and more insular, and I'm wondering why you feel that it's necessary to be that way to conduct the people's business. I'll just put that out as a question and you can answer it for yourself. And if you answer it at a meeting, that'd be great. But um, I would like to see each uh, commissioner, uh, I think they, they need to understand what it means to serve the public. Maybe uh, re-look at, look at, at their pledge or when they were signed in. It's to the Constitution, and the Constitution provides for the public redress of their government, and it's very, very clear. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, moving on to item I-2, 2019 proposed summer camp and pool rates. Let's see a little more. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve? Certainly. Okay. And second? Second. And second. Any 
discussion? Does anyone want to present? Does anyone read this? I'll just let y'all jump in. Um, I, I think you know where I'm going to go with it. For for years, I've been trying to advocate um, that the residents um, prices do, would not increase at the same rate as the non-residents. I am aware of the fact that there is a cross subsidization going, and because we have more non-residents participating in our our recreation pro programs, including the pool, we do rely on this cash flow to, um, you know, to deliver as, as wonderful results as you have delivered. Um, however, I, I do think there, there should be a, a, a larger differential between the residents who actually pay taxes that support this place versus non-residents who would need to carry a larger share um, via this one-time fee. Um, so, uh, looking at the rates right now, it seems like, you know, because the, the other facilities, these prices are before their increases, correct? Um, yeah, the, what you see in the, the 2018 pool rate comparisons that you're looking at, that's, um, those, yeah, those are the 18 rates, and talking to those facilities when we talk to them, they either weren't sure they're in a similar timeline and you know the work of this meeting here. Um, I'm pretty certain that Tara Linda and Hamilton's fees will not be changing um, for the 2019. Uh, I'm sorry, this is poor rate from the one thing There it is. Um, San Rafael is not changing its rates, most likely going into um, 2019. But the other ones, we have, we didn't know if they were going to be um, increasing or not for these uh, camp rates. What are you looking for camp or pool? I'm sorry. I'm looking, Both uh, overall, or just... so I'm looking at the pool okay, specifically, so. and also um, the. In, in my opinion, and again, I don't have a financial analysis to back it up, and it would be great if we could at some point make one happen. I don't really know how to go about it, but um, it seems like in our interest, it would be to maximize the number of memberships, correct? Um, therefore, I would be keeping the cost of memberships steady or increase them at a lower pace than the cost of drop-in. So what I see at other facilities in San, uh, in San Francisco, for example, many museums have an arrangement where, you know, it's, if you go in, let's say, one time, it costs you, let's say, $50, but you can get a membership for 120 or, you know, 150 whatever. So, um, it, of course, this would not make sense in a pool scenario, but that's kind of the tendency that, that I'm thinking of. Uh, basically encourage m memberships, more predictable cash flow. Right, and we, uh, I, yeah, totally. You know, we have um, seen a big increase in memberships this last year. We are, you know, doing less to disincentivize the memberships through some of the, you know, some of the deals and, and discounted option offers we were offering throughout the seasons before. Um, as far as not, that I do uh, not, advocating for a change in the drop-in rates this year. Um, we, in, in trying to keep things clean and simple um, and staying kind of to whole numbers, those would change a little and less frequently to not, otherwise it'd be a big jump to go a whole dollar up, you know, would be a, a pretty drastic increase. So those change a little bit, you know, less frequently, but then I think the membership is, if you're going to be coming more often, it's obviously a much better deal to be a member, depending on how often you're using the pool. So I think the, the drop-ins tend to be people that are coming just sporadically, um, and we're not having those people, I don't think there's been incentive for a lot of them to, to jump into the membership option if they're not already using the pool frequently. That, um, but I, yeah, I mean, I understand the. the I know for sure there are many people who are doing punch passes that could have been incentivized into a membership. You know, right. Given, given a, but that's um, that's just my suggestion, and I, I obviously I'm relying on your experience and just um, you know. So yes, I you know makes sense. I understand what it's a clean number to present across the board. Um, just in the future, that's kind of my, where my heart is. Gotcha. Any questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? 
Steve? Yeah, uh, I think Isabella has some great points. Um, I think we discussed this in the past. Uh, one model to look at, and I'm not sure if it's a successful model, uh, is the Sleepy Hollow Association. Um, they have two levels of membership. Um, one is basically double the other. Maybe, maybe what would work here is we have a membership and, uh, and people can buy it and then receive all kinds of discounts as if they lived in Marinwood. And that would be, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. But if you lived in Marinwood, then of course you'd get the same levels of discount. That way it keeps the pricing scheme simple at the um, cashiers and uh, the accounting I think would be simpler. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying, Luke, is don't be locked into what Tara Linda does. There may be whole other ways that are far more profitable um, and sustainable. Uh, because let's not forget, we're, we've got a big, big bill coming up on the pool and we really need cash reserves for it. So. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's the time to say this, but you you'd mentioned that we lost, we didn't do uh, uh, Groupons and we lost, we didn't make the 14,000. And I've always looked at Groupon as a, a trade, unknown trade-off. We don't know if we're cannibalizing existing business or we're gathering uh, new business. So I just think um, Isabella's uh, uh, urge to to do a real in-depth analysis is a really good one and I think uh, it's it's certainly well worth it because of the long-term impl implications of our pricing structure. I want to echo Director, Director Perry's recommendation. I think that the delta between local residents and people who come in needs to be significantly different, whether it's 50% off or whatnot. I think you know, as, as someone with two small kids, everyone we know who lives out of Mount Marin would say for the price, it's an absolute no-brainer that the pool here is a destination pool. I think there's a lot of flexibility on price. And I think, one, from the taxation perspective, and two, from building a community in Marinwood, to me, it seems like a no-brainer to make it a no-brainer payment for every family in Marinwood. Thank you. Anything else? in my comment about pool and camp rates, which this is the advice I gave to Shane many, many years ago, was raise it by 3% every year. Raise everything by 3%. So you've got a four and a two, so that's a nice average of three. Um, but, you know, everything else is gravy, but I think as long as you keep doing those incremental things and staying up with inflation, you know, whatever the differential is, but I mean, the residents are used, used to it. And so, um, yeah, but, uh, Anyway, I'm going to pull my nose out and pull the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously. All right, moving on to item I3, P&R Commission Annual Facility Inspection Report. Um, is there any substitutions for review, right? There's no action to be taken. This is just a product of the commission over throughout all of their various inspections and then re-reviews and putting notes. Uh, Luke and I certainly sat down and spent some time on this together as well, uh, uh, looked at some of the notes, and then went through line by line by line with the commission in terms of priorities. Uh, we weighed in a little bit more on the feasibility side of it, uh, as well as the uh, cost estimate side of it. Things with check marks as you're looking through uh, in terms of priority and feasibility, it basically means it's done. I want to know one thing, if it's all right, um, Please. for the uh, the two line items on, on the mini park, the second uh, two, there's, um, we discussed putting additional fencing on the playground um, and some new signage, and the signage is in progress, but the, as far as the fencing, there's a note on here that the vandalism has waned since, uh, since we had started talking about this. Um, and then we just recently had someone break another platform on the mini park this last week, and we're in the process of ordering a replacement. So um, we had a nice 
parade fair for about a year plus, and um, okay. so now we're, it's a, it's a much smaller, uh, there's just a step, and I'm hoping it's not going to be too expensive, but um, it's going to be something that uh, we bring back to the uh, forefront in, 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 in light of that, so. Um, do you, from your managerial standpoint, find this uh, walkthrough helpful, or a majority of those items on your list anyway? Uh, it's a mix, so it is helpful to get other perspectives on you know some of these areas that when our staff walk through, you, you, you tend to uh, become very familiar with, with how things are. It's hard to see, yeah, you know, so it's, it is nice to some people's perspectives on, well, what about that? Could that look better? You look at it like, oh, yeah, I haven't noticed it in a long time. Sure, that could look a lot better. We could fix that. So I, I think it's a beneficial exercise. So you, you would want to want um, to see it in the future. And it also helps kind of just prioritize some of the stuff that, you know, there's, there's a million things on the list that we'll eventually try to get to, but this kind of um, brings things up to a, up to the top right where you can sort of um, can put some gates on it. So I don't think it's a, um, a waste of time. That's what I'm asking. Are there questions, comments from the board? Okay, thank you. Thing here too, in terms of Luke touching on, I also need to touch on, and uh, Robin will love me for doing this. The very bottom line, yeah. um, we absolutely need to work on. Uh, yes, the whole kitchen needs work over there, but the oven um, is got to push its way up the priority list, and uh, uh, we're going to try to find a way to make that happen. Ideally, before summer camps yeah, start. Uh, we just wind up spending money on all sorts of repairs on that thing. It doesn't, the oven inside part doesn't heat very evenly. Um, actually got some very good recommendations from the person we use to come out and prepare it every time it breaks. Uh, good brands. Um, we started kind of looking into all of those things without going full blown commercial and then having to install a full suppression system which requires all sorts of manual testings and everything else. So, um, which are usually limited to when you have uh, constantly lit pilot lights that you get into suppression systems and commercial systems, but you can get things that are very close to commercial quality uh, that are still electric start, so on and so forth. So uh, I would prepare yourselves for that. And I think that's actually a pretty accurate cost estimate. We have strictly for a, uh, to put a new oven range in there. Yeah, I wouldn't go ultra high end either on it, um, simply because uh, it's also a lot of public use in there. And uh, I don't want to throw a uh, top of the line range in there for people that, right, but I want something that's tougher than I'm going to go down to Best Buy and find as well. Can we just get the same as? Uh, I don't think you need that high end. I wouldn't put that nice of one in this setting. Um, that one was definitely a little bit more than three or four grand, but I, uh, the South Bends that we're looking at are good. Is that in addition to what Shane had suggested? Um, I'm not holding out hope on that. Shane had suggested, you know, potentially looking into things like restaurant foreclosures or stuff like that. That when they are wholesaling those things out, the majority of those types it's are the commercial. types that absolutely are commercial, need suppression systems installed. And you, do, you just don't want that. Okay. Yeah, I do. You, we don't want it. that. Even now, even now you've doubled your yeah. cost minimum. That, I'm just making sure. That Plus all the right. annual inspections and everything else in the. I personally am in no way, shape, or form a proponent of trying to convert that kitchen into a commercial kitchen and a licensed commercial kitchen. is uh, It's not the business we're in, and it's absolute mission creep, not to mention you're talking several hundred thousand dollars worth of work to do that. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the board on this? Questions, comments from the public, Stephen? Uh, actually, this is a uh, question. W whatever happened to the old, uh, who was a pretty good stove that was in there before, what, what happened to it? Uh, it was strapped. It wasn't a pretty good stove. We actually had the same guy look at it because we talked to him about, hey, is it worth trying to fix this to then put that into there? And he said, not a chance. Um, this thing is, uh, it's toast. You, even the parts on this thing are toast. Uh, and we use this guy plenty. So it was scrapped. For a couple hundred bucks? Uh, I don't have that direct information in front of me. I don't know. Anything else? Linda? Yeah, I, I have to apologize to the board because I did not print out, I'm assuming you, you have a new printout of all of the park and rec um, items that need to be fixed or the priority and 
feasibility. The one thing that I did want to ask about was Creekside Pathway asphalt near Bridgegate. Um, I, I know that we talked about that in board meetings, and that was an item that was supposed to be pushed off to the side because it was going to cost 30 grand or more. And I wonder what the status of that was. I'm sorry, I don't have the sheet of paper with it, but it's um, the very first one, the Creekside Park, the top, the very first one. Um, yeah, I think that's something that we still need to uh, get quotes on. So there hasn't been much progress. On okay, that. so no decisions have been made on that. Correct. And the, the reason I was asking is because that happens to be da -da, a multi-purpose trail. And it's on the map of Marinwood as a multi-purpose trail. Multi-purpose trails are usually dirt, or as the panhandle is starting to become a little more gravel on top of the dirt. So I just wanted to throw that out. I just want to make sure that nothing has been decided because it, dirt and gravel would not cost 30 grand for concrete or you know whatever. Um, you all were talking about a few months back. So just a thought, didn't want to spend the money. Thanks. So I, yeah. I actually had a question, Luke, as well. Um, what, what has become of the request for an accessible handrail on the quiet wood walk path? Has um, that been looked into? Have you planned for it? Have you budget, you know, projected a budget? Is it feasible? Is we it a did, problem? Uh, talk about that at length at the uh, commission meeting, um, and I think what we ended up leaving in um, that set. Yeah, no decision was made. Um, so um, we're looking at a couple different options, whether it's a handrail, um, steps, grading, and just in the dirt itself, and, and kind of figure out what what makes the most sense and what would be good long term. So we haven't uh, come up with a. Okay, so I just want to point out, Measure A funds is for this type of use, and so if other, if we're buying stuff and not doing uh, the accessible stuff, we've, we've got, we're, we're misusing those funds, and so I, I urge you to, you know, consider this a priority. You know, people in here, in our community, that would be appreciative of this don't come to meetings but it is what we owe our community as far as accessibility thank you moving on to item five four recreation okay. and maintenance oh comment um i think that i thought the list was really helpful to, to understand what loops and team works on um and it was really impressive in terms of the length and, and the amount of effort that that went into it but i guess my one question is is given how much effort that has been made you know, with the, the proposed, with the maintenance shed in its current state, safety aside, everyone's on the same page, but is there anything that was not on this list that would have been able to be accomplished had we had a maintenance shed? And I think this is relevant in the sense of select objections in the community to the size and the utility and the vanity of the project, and what did we give up if we had that today? I think that would be helpful from the community's perspective in terms of your perspective in terms of justifying that versus what we can deliver, which is incredibly impressive, versus what, on top of that, we would have gotten had we had some of those facilities. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I'm going to move on to item I4, Recreation and Maintenance Activity Reports. Turn it over to Luke. Thank you. So uh, we just had a big winter fest. I feel like uh, having it the first Friday of the month makes Christmas feel like it goes on forever, which is great. Uh, so I'm not going to complain about that. But um, Winter Fest went really well. It was, I think, my favorite one so far um, here. Just it was a really fun event, really well attended. Uh, a great Santa, um, probably the most realistic Santa we've ever had, so that was fun. And we're um, looking forward to the wine event uh, in February coming up. Hope you guys can attend. It'll be another great um, series of wineries and, and some good things. Uh, we're, the correct staff is we're really busy right now uh, working on the next spring summer catalog getting all our classes and programs finalized all the way through august which which is a, always a challenge to think that far ahead and get uh, staff and instructors and, and contractors to give us commitments and schedules and things um, all the way through the end of the summer so 
Um, that's looking really good, and, and we're on the right track to get um, everything set in stone to, in, for in print um, for that uh, to come out in February. And uh, Robin has been conducting interviews for staff that are home on breaks, as we've also been doing for, for the pool staff. Um, we're currently receiving applications for the um, vacant rec supervisor position, and I'm uh, planning on having interviews start in a couple weeks. So I'm um, looking forward to getting that position filled and to being whole once again uh, as a rec staff. Uh, the uh, financial report um, finally uh, got that out, and you guys can uh, see that on a couple pages in, I think. Uh, we're very happy with like, the way the summer went. This is the full pool season, and then um, also including at the bottom the summer camp program. Um, and we uh, I included some points of interest in just some of the, the changes from 2017 to 2018. Um, and if you guys have questions about them, I'm happy to answer anything. But overall, I'm very pleased with how the season went and um, looking forward to having another great season as we, as we plan for the next one. Um, are there any, any questions specifically about summer financial? Yeah. The um, um, camps in particular, um, I mean, you obviously have it nailed when it comes to the um, the plain vanilla camps. I think there is uh, opportunity growth in specialty camps, especially for older kids. I would imagine you have data on kids' ages as the community, you know, um, yeah. progresses through um, the levels of camps, and you could anticipate at least the ages. And then, I guess, um, you know, you guys are always on top of current, you know, trends, whatever. STEM, uh, STEAM nowadays, and um, I don't know if we would have staff or could go about um, arranging for staff within our community so we, we don't have to collect only you know, a fraction of the um, fee that we, we're paying outside um, companies to provide the specialty camps. Oh yeah, I mean, um, we, were, we do try to look at all the different options and, and um, see what we can do to get creative. Uh, kind of on that note, unfortunately, this uh, summer we just found out that we're not going to have access to the middle, middle, middle school, they're doing construction, which does limit our ability to, to do class and classroom programming that, we're, that we've, you know, we're used to. We're going to um, still have that, it'll be a little bit more off-site and we're working on where we can get classroom space and how we're going to do that. So. We're um, currently in discussions about what we can do and, and trying to continue to add more um, different and varied programs. But yeah, it's definitely on our radar and then big, that is our biggest area of growth on, on, our, on our arms as well. Um, so we're hoping that doesn't affect things too much, but I know it'll probably deter a few people that aren't going to be able to take advantage of the half day at the specialty camp and the other half of the day just on site still with, with the rest of the room camp. So um, we're, we're I'm confident that we'll be able to, to figure out a, a plan that, that makes sense and, and works, but it's um, it's definitely disappointing not to have that facility at our disposal this oh, yeah. year. So they're giving us a little bit of use of the field and some other things, but um, we're, we're definitely going to have to change up our, our flow of traffic and, and how we manage all the um, different you know, opportunities. So. Can I ask a question? Do we look at what the elementary schools, and I don't know if the middle schools have this too, the after school programs that like run through Dixie? And from Mary Silvera and stuff, and see which ones are the most popular. Like, if we can find out which ones, which ones are what like. The, uh, so, like, I just signed up my five-year-old for science and for art, and before, before that, she was in nature detectives. Like, these are local Dixie teachers who like retired but are doing this like on the side. Would any of them like be wanting to come and do like a mini camp for a week or two? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question. I know. Um, uh, we have had some teachers that have offered some some enrichment programs yeah. with us um, over the years, yeah. and a lot of teachers do take off for the summer, and, and that's well. What these are these are teachers that are retired from like these oh, schools, and they do the after school things, yeah. programs, and like they have like they're there every day, right. but for different grades every day. So like maybe instead of doing that, they could be like <coughs> this person is doing like experiments. It's like the you know for yeah, the special no, camps, just. As a thought of if we're having problems finding good 
I know that Rob, that's definitely on Robin's radar, and she yeah. had, and she does have some good ties to the yeah. teaching teach community because her, her mom's a retired yeah. school teacher, and, and you know, so I mean, we have had some of them are the ones running some of our special okay, education in the past, but Sorry. no, but it's definitely I think that's a great a great point to look at what's currently being offered right down the street where we might actually have some of these camps running this summer anyway. Yeah. So yeah, definitely good. Um, yeah. Anything else from the board on this? Um, Okay. I was just going to say in response to it, I know Luke didn't really touch on it, um, staffing is getting to be challenging and it's not just for us. I know this is kind of a trend everywhere, especially even at the pool level when finding lifeguards and finding everything else and with minimum wages going up the way that they are, that uh, other jobs that were once uh, not very appealing to young people and very well paying are now like, okay, well I can go get paid the same amount and have little to no responsibility. Uh, I, I know a lot of people in the youth industry and everybody's struggling finding staff uh, and just getting staff. Uh, it's, it's becoming definitely a challenge and it's not quite the draw. Uh, you know, we fortunately have an incredible return rate amongst our staff, but every year, uh, you know, Robin's out there trying to bring in new staff. Uh, you know, some of them are fairly young, whatever, and those are the ones where we get them to start with us and then keep them for several years. But those, some of the advantages of these specialty camps, uh, especially if they're just going for a week or two, is uh, that's a few less staff that we have to find. And be, I agree with you in the bringing in our own staff, being able to capitalize that. Um, but then sometimes we got to teach those staff how to do this particular specialty camp or whatever the case may be. And there's certainly a benefit to bringing in some of these kind of uh, programs in a box, is what I always called it personally, because you're bringing in somebody, you know, it's not your own organic thing. Um, but finding people is getting challenging, um, and even at the pool level too. And you know, I meant to bring this up when you're talking about the rates. Um, and looking at some of these increases in rates, uh, you know, increases in staffing costs, not just due to minimum wage, but minimum wage goes up, that pushes up a little bit more of those jobs that were already paying a little bit above minimum wage, which pushes up the next round. You know, I mean, it's a like a reverse domino effect, uh, kind of like an escalator to a sense. So it, it's getting challenging. I don't know why it is right now, but I know it's we're not unique in it, and I know a lot of uh, youth providers are facing that issue of trying to find. Uh, not just quality staff, but staff to get in there and work in their programs too. So, how many of the guards in training and counselors in training come back and actually become guards and counselors? I would say um, all. It's hard to say how many of them come back, but like almost every one of our uh, incoming camp counselors and incoming lifeguards each year did do the CIT and GIT okay, program. Okay, so this is capacity. definitely a big way for us. Oh yeah, it's, okay. a, it's the main feeder for, yeah, I mean that's um, where we get the majority of them. Okay. Any questions, comments from the public on the um, recreation and park maintenance activity reports? Yeah, uh, re regarding staffing, you know, I, I just joined the YMCA, I was a member of the JCC before. Um, you know, they run their pools with I don't know, I think the rotation is two lifeguards or three lifeguards. Anyhow, in terms of staffing, I mean, I, I love, love that we offer opportunities for our kids uh, to, you know, have their first summer job. But I also think that maybe we can look at the level of staffing, decrease it a little bit, and then increase some of the um, uh, salary. Um, I, I just think that, you know, when I go swimming in the pool and I see, I don't know, eight, ten guards, you know, most of them sitting around, I'm like, you know, I, I don't think that's good for the kids. They're, they're learning that government, you don't have to work that hard. Um, but it just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make sense. And I, I just think that, um, you know, we are operating a business so to speak. We're not just subsidizing all this great activity. We, we do want to, at the end of the day, not only pay for our facilities, but also uh, create a reserve so the programs can continue. And let's not forget, we've got pensions to take care of. So I, I just think that uh, everything's going great, but it doesn't mean we can't um, tighten the reins and do a little better. Um, but quality-wise, it's all there. 
Um, also, I want to make a recommendation. I, I, I'm just, uh, I just saw Sue Holland, who is a science teacher, and she's involved in the Dixie Outdoor Schools. I don't know if you, you know her personally, but she would be a person that, uh, if you wanted to do a nature camp, she would be ideal. Um, and she's got experience in middle age, middle, middle school, as well as a, uh, young kids. So, good work. Thank you. The date of uh, item I-5, date of next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is January 22nd of 2019. Can I ask about that? Sure. Um, it, I think it might be helpful for people who don't come to meetings and know when the meetings are to put the time in as well. Because now that we've got the two commissions starting at 7 o'clock and the board starting at 7.30, it, it would be nice when you say, you know, the next meeting is going to be on such and such a date at 7 o'clock or at 7.30. And I was just wondering if we could do that. It might be helpful. Thanks. All right, moving on to item J1. New and other business, election of board officers for 2019, president and vice president. Do I have a motion? I move to nominate Isabel as president. Um, I have a, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm making a motion to nominate Leah. <laughs> um, I don't know how the Roberts rules go in this situation. My There's motion is on the table. for a second on the first motion first. Okay, second on the first Sorry. motion. Count backwards from three, three, two, one. So I, um, I want to say thank you for, um, oh, for thinking of me, but um, I just don't feel as, I don't feel I'm eloquent enough to handle the presidency. Oh, okay. I, I disagree totally. <laughs> I would have to disagree on that too. to serve if, if asked, um, but I also remember a time when the, the positions were just, they rotated throughout each seat, and I kind of like that because essentially it forced everybody to get practice whether they liked it or not, yeah. but it's not necessarily the most, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like you can look at it a lot of different ways, and so that's the way it was done like quite a while ago, and then the board moved into sort of just you know, whoever was available or, yeah. you know, motioned or was or wasn't here. So I've seen it happen and, and work both ways. Um, so you also have haven't done it for a little while. I, I think we, I think you're, you're I, out. I'm going to, yeah. thank you. Considering <laughs> my first meeting, I was like, oh, wait, not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What if we nominate you? Whatever. Come on. Give me something that we can work with here. Um, so we didn't have um, any second for for my motion to nominate you, right? You can make it. I'm not going to make my motion again to nominate the uh, as a president. She's, I'll second if she's stating that she's willing to do it again. I didn't want to force you into a position having had done this last year. I appreciate your service. I, I think it, um, it takes a great deal, so thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I would add to it all, but it won't do you guys any good. <laughs> to hire my point of view. I, I've worked with Bill as the president, I've worked with Lee as the president, uh, and I've seen uh, 
Isabella had plenty of the chair role and uh, serve as the uh, sit-in president when you can't be here. Uh, everybody's great for me to work with. I think all three of you do good. I think I uh, agree with Sivan's sentiments in that it, she would be better served having a year on the board before being <laughs> thrust into the, uh, <laughs> the chair position. I mean, to be honest, the biggest role of the board president, uh, quite honestly, is chairing the meetings. Um, Isabella has always been good about meeting with me when I need to. Bill was always good about it. Um, Leah and I have had a regular monthly meeting the week before. Every board meeting has been very helpful. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed working with you, and I, as the district manager, certainly would not complain in any way, shape, or form if you were to do it again. Um, yet I, you know, have prior experience with Bill in that role, and I know what Isabella would bring to the table. I think all three of you would do it fantastic job at it uh, personally. So that's why I tell you it won't help you at all to hear my two cents. All right. So we have a motion on the table. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Anything from the public? Uh, I agree with you, Leah, that it, that uh, changing it is is good. I, I, Isabel, don't worry. We're you know, it's not going to get hard for you all of a sudden. I think, I think, uh, don't out underestimate your your skills and and your, you know, the good head you have on your shoulders. And um, I I would encourage you to uh, uh, take on the responsibility. Um, I, having said that, I probably still disagree with all of you, but but uh, I, I'd love love to see the process continue. I would recommend whoever is most comfortable interrupting Stephen to take the. I see something. Um, I was just thinking. I know that when Isabella first started on the board, she was doing. I don't want to make it sound rude. She was doing so much more than other people were, and it seemed like every month you had stuff going on, and every month you had more stuff to, you know, uh, this kind of stuff to talk about, and these kind of rules and regulations and these kind of reports, and you always seem to come prepared. You always have the most questions, you have the most detail, and it's very, very refreshing to know that you spent so much time looking at the things before you come to the board meeting, because, and I, I can tell this because of your detailed questions. So I'm just saying that in the beginning where everybody was throwing stuff at you and you were doing an awful lot of extra stuff more than anybody else, that shouldn't happen anymore, should it? I mean, you can give up that kind of stuff. If the rest of the board would agree that you are the president, how about stop giving Isabella so much extra work to do, give it to somebody else? That's just my opinion. I'm going to call those in, in oh, sorry, call the question. All those in favor of me serving another term as board president? Aye. 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 Um, did you? I said aye. Sorry. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all, I think. <laughs> um, thank you. So now we need a vice president. I have a motion. I have a motion that doesn't have to be vice president. Second. Uh, and so even though you don't think you're eloquent, you do a darn good job. Yes. Any other discussion on the board? Discussion from the public? Yes. What, you didn't mention Jeff. Is Jeff okay? I, he's not here tonight. So he's not here tonight. So we're not including, it wouldn't be fair to anybody to throw him under the, the bus without them being here. So we're not considering him tonight. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Right. Congratulations. The two blocks. We have a phone here. Let me call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, good real point. Yes. Good change. Um, item G2 request for future meeting agenda items. Um, I would like to uh, request that our minutes are no longer, uh, how do I say it, uh, that they reflect actions of the board rather than 
um, or record the discussion or interpretation thereof. So um, I'd like for the board to discuss that at some point, whether it would be feasible. Also, um, it would be fabulous to see if there was any progress on the committee that was supposed to meet with Sarah Fell regarding the fire arrangements, fire department arrangements. And um, the high level solar energy thing, I know Eric is swamped, but just in case at some point, and I promise to make myself more available if you need help or something. Um, and then the shed update. Yeah. That's my four items. I know. Um, it's a new year and I'm throwing it out there. Anybody else? <coughs> now that you don't have to share that. Either. I know. <laughs> it's all strategy, my friend. Uh, any questions, comments from the public? Steven? Yeah, um, well, we request shed updates and we still don't really know where the budgets are. We don't know where the, what the problems are uh, that uh, seems to be in stall mode or maybe you're moving ahead. I don't know. But, um, you know, the process has uh, been very opaque and um, uh, I, think, I think you're underestimating uh, the public at large um, and I, I just think that uh, you know, to do a good job here, you you involve the public, um, and uh, we're 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 a democracy. So I, I hope you I hope you make it part of the regular update. This is a very very substantial investment that we'll be making into our community, and not to have a budget, not to know what's going on, not to know how much we're spending for various items is, well, it's, I, it might, might be illegal, it's, it's certainly unethical as far as I'm concerned. All right, thank you. Anything else? No, okay. Thank you. Um, I would love to hear uh, the balance of the Measure 8 funds by year and how, what we spend of those and what we're considering spending it on and what we have decided against spending it on um, as it relates to the decision making process. Thank you. And did you have something? Well, I was uh, going to ask something very similar to what Stephen said. I would like to see at least a brief summary of what kind of tasks have been done in the previous month and how much they cost for the park maintenance shed. Because we know now from the most recent invoice from architect Hansel that he has been doing work and other people have been doing work on it, but it would be nice to know what kind of work that is and what the status is. You know, where are we with the county? Where are we with new drawings? Where are we with any more models or whatever? Just some kind of status. It doesn't have to be big status, just a little, you know, paragraph or two. Thanks. And sorry, just to reiterate my comment from earlier, updated renderings, if you could distribute that associated with the the incorrect drawings uh, uh, correctly um, modified. And then secondly, if we could just buy two of the sheds that Eric talked about earlier, and we could just check off that for $4,000 and we can just be the shed conversation. Yeah. We can, we can move this shed issue along very quickly if you... Let's work, move along to item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. Board members? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. I'd like to say to everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to say to everybody, when you think about what we started in January of this year until now, there's been so much transition. There's been a lot that's actually gotten done. So I kind of just wanted to say a big congratulations to staff and everybody who works here because, I mean, we're here. We made it. All these things at the beginning of the year, especially within the fire department, that looked onerous and overwhelming. Um, there's been a lot of resolution and a lot of moving forward, and so I think that that's a really positive direction for everybody. And I look forward to 2019, like kind of just 
Moving ahead. Thank you. And you just jinxed the next 11 days. Good one. <laughs> Thank you. That's kind of good to say. Um, if you happen to see her, today's a milestone birthday for Assistant Rec Director Robin Burton. Uh, she turned 30 today, so yeah. say happy birthday to her. How old are Hey, guys. Did you do for the holidays? Uh, okay, I'll All see you. Right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's a fast one. All right. You know, they, they, they say fascism is very efficient.